Hello, my friends, and welcome to this new practical activity, the first one of part six, reinforcement learning, where we will be implementing the UCB algorithm, upper confidence bound. It is one of the most exciting branches of machine learning because, you know, it is the one the closest to artificial intelligence in the sense that, you know, we're making some programs that play some actions just like a robot. So this is very exciting. This is one of my favorite branches, if not the number one. And so I'm so excited right now to teach you about the fundamentals of reinforcement learning, and especially I'm so excited to implement two of the best reinforcement learning models with you, which are UCB and Thompson sampling. So first in this section, we will implement UCB, upper confidence bound. And once again, we will apply it on a business case study, which you know will be the next part of the story we had in part three classification. You remember that SUV, you know, that brand new luxury SUV that this uh, car company was trying to optimize the targeting thanks to classification? Well, this time we're going to optimize the online advertising, meaning that we're going to find the best ad, you know, among different ads designs, the best ad that will convert the maximum customers to click on the ad and, you know, potentially buy the product, buy the car. OK, so I will explain the story a bit more later. But before, let's just make sure everyone here is on this same page. I gave you the links to this whole folder right before this tutorial in the article. So make sure to click it. And now we should all be on the same page. So let's do this. Let's enter part six, reinforcement learning. And we're going to start, as we said, with upper confidence bound, UCB. And so this time you not only see the two folders, Python and R, but you also see the full slide of the UCB algorithm. And you will also see the full slide of the Thompson something algorithm in the other folder. So let's have a look at it. Make sure to download it. And if you want, you can print it and post it on your wall. There you go. You have the three steps of the UCB algorithm, which we are going to implement together. You know, I will actually give you a lot of exercises in this implementation. I will tell you before we implement each of the steps to implement it yourself. So at first you will have to implement step one, then once step one is implemented, we will implement step two. You will do it first before we do it together and then step three. So you see, it will be a very learn by doing process. All right, so that's the slide. Make sure to download it. And now let's go into Python first to implement the UCB algorithm. All right, so as usual, you have two files here. You have the data set at CTR optimization. CTR means click through rate. And that's what we're going to optimize thanks to upper confidence bound first and then Thompson sampling. And then we have the implementation, of course, upper confidence bound in the IPYNB format, which you can open with either Google Collaboratory or Jupyter Notebook. All right, so as usual, let's start by explaining what this data set is about. So as I said, we are doing the next part of the story of this car dealership trying to sell that new SUV. We've already done the targeting, you know, we've already optimized the targeting thanks to classification in part three. And now we're going to optimize the click through rate of some ads we're going to make for this car. OK, so what happened exactly is that the advertising team prepared 10 different ads, you know, with 10 different designs. For example, on one ad, we will see the SUV in a beautiful mountain. On the other ad, we will see the SUV in a futuristic city. On another ad, we'll see the SUV in a charming city, you know, like a charming city in the south of France or Italy. On another ad, we'll see the car on the moon. You know, why not? On another ad, we'll see the car on a beautiful countryside cornfield, you know, something like that. So basically, all the ads have different designs and the advertising team is wondering, well, which ad will convert the most? You know, which ad will attract the most people? to click the ad and then potentially buy the SUV. So we have these 10 different ads and what we're gonna do, and that is the process of online learning, we're gonna show these ads to different users online, you know, once they connect to a certain website or to a search engine, you know, it can be the ads that appear at the top of a page when you type a research on Google. We're gonna show one of these ads each time the user connects to the web page, and we're gonna record the result whether this user clicked yes or no on the ad. OK, so just to recap, there is a first user that connects to, let's say, a web page. Our algorithm, which will be here first, UCB will select an ad to show to this user. And then the user will decide to click yes or no on the ad. If the user clicks on the ad, we will record it as one. And if the user doesn't click on the ad, we will record it as zero. OK, and then a new user connects to the web page and same 
the algorithm selects an ad to show to this new user. And if this new user clicks the ad, then it's a one. And if not, it's a zero. Okay. And we're going to do this for lots of users, actually 10,000 users. And that's what this data set is about. However, now there is something you must absolutely understand. And that is very, very important. Make sure to understand it and make sure to rewind if this is not understood. Okay. So I'm going to explain this. Please listen carefully. So, you know, in reality, what happens is that users connect one by one to the web page and for each of them, we successively show them the ad, right? So everything happens in real time. You know, it's a dynamic process. It's not a static process with a static data set, which was recorded over a certain period of time. It's a real time process. And therefore, the only way to simulate this would be either that I, you know, make 10 real ads right now, you know, 10 real ads of a car. Then I open a Google AdWords account and then I show the ads for real to some users, you know, real persons connecting to the website. Of course, I'm not going to do this because first of all, this is costly. And then, you know, this would deceive the users. Well, you know, I would have to really sell a car somehow. So of course, this is not an option. And therefore I have to make a simulation. Okay. I have to make a simulation. And this simulation is exactly given by this data set because in this data set, what happens is that each row corresponds to the different users connecting to the web page and to whom we're going to show the ads. And then each column of this data set corresponds to the different ads. Okay. From ad one to ad 10. And this data set is a simulation in the sense that each time a user connects to the web page, well, this data set tells us, even if we wouldn't know in reality, this data set tells us on which ad the user of the row would click on, you know? So for example, this first user, you know, this corresponds to the first user to whom we're going to show the ad. And what these cells mean is that this user would click on ad one. If we show this user ad one, then it wouldn't click at two. If we show at two, because there is a zero here, then the user wouldn't click at three. If we show at three, it wouldn't click at four. If we show at four, but then it would click at five. If we showed at five, and etc. So in other words, we know thanks to this simulation, you know, this data set doing a simulation, we know that this user would only click at one at five and at nine. If we showed these ads, and then if we showed all of the other ads at two at three, etc., up to at eight and at 10, well, this user wouldn't click the ad. Now I know we wouldn't know that in reality, but that's why I'm saying that this data set is a simulation. And this is the only way we can actually run the UCB algorithm or the Thompson something algorithm, if not doing it for real, you know, with a real advertising campaign. Okay. So I hope it's clear. Please rewind if it's not clear, because I think I've said all the keywords, you know, this data set is a simulation. Therefore, for all the users, you know, corresponding to these rows, we know on which ad the users will click, right? This user, for example, would click only on ad number two or ad number eight right? But wouldn't click on all the other ads. And so that's the only way we can indeed simulate the Thompson sampling or UCB algorithm. All right. So I hope it's clear. Then we have, let's see, let's scroll down to the bottom. We have in total 10,000 users, as we said. And so we're going to run the UCB algorithm first, and then the Thompson sampling algorithm to figure out the ad that has the highest conversion rate, right? The ad on which the users click the most. So I know that we could do it, for example, with a naive strategy, you know, a naive algorithm, like a simple one where we collect some simple statistics to see which ad is most frequently clicked on. But remember, as Kirill explains in the intuition lectures, each time we impress an ad, you know, on the website or the Google search engine, well, this incurs a cost, right? It has a cost to impress ad. Therefore, we need to figure out as fast as possible, you know, in the minimum number of rounds, because, you know, the users here are represented as rounds because we show the ads to the users one by one, as in one round after the other. So we need to figure out in a minimum number of rounds, which ad converts the most, meaning which is the best ad to which the users are most attracted to. And that's why we need a stronger algorithm than a simple statistics algorithm. And that stronger algorithm will be first UCB and then Thompson sampling. And we will even see which of the two is the most powerful. All right. So I think that's enough explained for this data set. Now we're going to start the implementation. I can't wait. This is a very exciting and actually widely used algorithm in online advertising or digital marketing. So let's do this. Let's click this implementation and then let's open it with Google Collaboratory. 
or Jupyter Notebook as you want. All right, so now it is loading it. It is loading the notebook, laying out the notebook. And now here you go. Welcome to the UCB implementation. All right, so as usual, we're going to create a copy because this is in read-only mode. So in order to re-implement this from scratch, we're going to click File here and then Save a copy in Drive. This will create a copy inside which we will be able to re-implement the whole algorithm from scratch. All right, so it is opening. You notice that I have my data preprocessing template opened. That's because we will use it very quickly, you know, just to actually import the libraries and the data set. And so now, before we start, let's delete all the code cells here, but not the text cells. And very soon, we should be able to start. Okay, so that's a simple implementation, you know, a simple structure, but this cell will actually be long, and that's where you will practice by doing first some steps of the implementation before we do it together. And so let's have a look. Welcome to the UCB implementation. We will start first by importing the libraries, then we will import the data set, then we will implement the full UCB algorithm just following the steps on the slide, you know, with the three steps. And finally, we will visualize the results. And by that, I mean that we will plot a histogram where we will clearly see the ad that was the most selected. You know, and that's of course the ad that was identified as the strongest ad, you know, the most attractive ad for the users. And one thing I forgot to say, and which is really, really important, this data set actually suppose that each ad has a fixed conversion rate. So ad number one has a certain conversion rate, ad number two has another conversion rate, and then same for all the other ads. And that's of course because it is a required assumption of both the UCB and Thompson sampling algorithm, basically reinforcement learning algorithms for online learning. And that's, you know, anyway, the case in reality. For example, with the slot machines in the casino, well, they all have a fixed conversion rate unless they change it over time, but that's another question. But there you go. Usually an ad that you show online has a fixed conversion rate because it will convert over time the same rate of people. So we will assume this, and besides it's close to reality, but there you go, that's an important assumption of online learning. All right, so now we're ready. We're ready to begin this implementation. I hope you're excited. I hope you understood this data set and the fact that we're doing a simulation because we actually don't have too much of a choice. And so if everything is all good, well, my friends, let's begin this implementation in the next tutorial. And until then, enjoy machine learning.